system will change our weather pattern as we go through this new work week and we are tracking a tropical system that may be making landfall in the Carolinas and the mid-Atlantic as we go through the new week as well. We'll be tracking that for you right here on Weather on the Go. Thank you all for watching on this Sunday, September 15th, 2024. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below for the latest videos and live streams. Make sure to turn on all post notifications so you get those videos and live streams here in the future. If you do like today's weather forecast, give it a like, give it a thumbs up down below, and also leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll always get to those after the video. So what you're looking at here for today is your height anomaly map and simply just to break it down for you, the blue is a lower pressure and usually a, a more unsettled weather. The uh, reds and oranges are higher pressure and usually more quieter weather. So you can definitely see we have a high pressure system up here in eastern Canada today. That's bringing quieter weather and warmer temperatures up here as we go through today. We have cooler temperatures to the west, but more unsettled weather moving into the west coast today. And then we have more unsettled weather down here continuing continuing across the southeast. Let's look at our temperatures we started off with this morning and we started off very nice across the upper Midwest, Great Lakes in the Northeast, 50s and 60s. So any church services you attended today, any errands you had to run here on your Sunday morning were very nice out there with a refreshing air mass. Even the higher elevations of the Rockies back into Montana, Wyoming into Western Colorado, we woke up to temperatures into the 30s and 40s in those higher elevations and near the Gulf Coast temperatures were a bit warmer into the 70s. Now this afternoon comes around and we're going to be warming up the ground so we're going to have those temperatures rise well into the 80s, some 90s out there as we go into the afternoon. The hottest of temperatures will be in the central and the southern plains are over here in the desert southwest this afternoon with those 90s. Let's look at precipitation through today. Very quiet across most of the country. We have some unsettled weather, like we said, with that low pressure trough across the West Coast, bringing some showers to the Pacific Northwest, and we're not complaining. It's pretty dry up there. And then we'll cross portions of the Southeast. We are actually seeing some moderate to heavy rain showers and storms that continue in that narrow swath across portions of Mississippi and into Alabama, and that's going to be adding up there. So eastern Arkansas, Mississippi, southwestern Alabama here, and far western Florida, we could be seeing potentially another inch, inch and a half of rainfall over the next 24 hours. This goes all the way through your Monday morning commute, and this could lead to the potential for some flash flooding. We have a marginal to slight risk for flash flooding, especially around the Jackson metro area there into Mississippi, down into Mobile, Alabama. So we'll be keeping a very close eye on that as we go through today. Now let's look here at the tropics because the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida is tracking a system that has a 50-50 shot at developing and taking tropical characteristics right off the Carolina coast here. And this has continued to have a 50% chance of development over the past couple of days. And you can see a stronger low pressure system right off the coast of the Carolinas, literally 50, maybe 100 miles east of Myrtle Beach as we go into the day on Monday. It's going to be eastern loaded, so we're going to have onshore flow across portions of North Carolina and Virginia, and we're going to see a lot of that heavy rain swath on the eastern side of this system, and you can see as we go into Tuesday, this system's going to move up into North Carolina and Virginia. That's where we're going to see the heaviest of rains, and it's nice to see also some decent rains, soaking rains, into the Charleston, West Virginia area, and maybe Maybe the Parkersburg area there into West Virginia as well. And that continues with some sparse moisture moving up toward New York City, Long Island, Trenton, and even into the Hartford area into Connecticut as we go into Wednesday. Like I said, it's nice to see the moisture in West Virginia. We desperately need it up here. Two to three inches is on the way for areas like Charleston, West Virginia, maybe an inch or two there in Parkersburg, and then a lot of rainfall into areas like Richmond, Virginia, three to four inches there. Trenton, New Jersey, a couple of inches into the Raleigh area and Greenville. We could be seeing two to three inches during that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday time frame here this week. So we're also watching for flash flooding across this region. But like I said, into West Virginia, look at all the reds and maroon reds here. That is extreme, exceptional drought. Now, it's not going to be any drought busting rains, but it's going to help alleviate the drought in these areas that have been so dry for so long. And I wish I had better news for southeastern Ohio 
Ohio. Unfortunately, you're going to just miss out on the moisture probably just to your east, a uh, state over there into West Virginia, but hopefully you can get some moisture very soon. Looking at the long range of the tropics, it looks like the last week of September and into the first day or so of October, the tropics are going to start to light up again, potentially from the main development region as we have those tropical waves that move off of the African coast across toward the Windward Islands and the Lesser Antilles, and then moving across into the Caribbean and the Yucatan. That is something we'll have to watch as we go into the last week of September and into the first day or so of October. Now, looking at the weather pattern across North America and more so the lower 48 here as we go into the new work week we have a classic trough across the desert southwest now this trough is actually going to be bringing us a lot of those cooler temperature anomalies for the Reno area for Las Vegas San Diego and Los Angeles even Phoenix going to be below normal as we go through that five-day work week here this week and how much below normal well 25 30 degrees below normal will be our temperatures for this time time of year out there and then we have the warmer conditions especially up there into Manitoba Ontario and western Quebec Canada that's where we're going to be seeing temperatures 20 30 degrees above normal there but that will also trickle down into the upper Midwest and the plain states as we go through the week so let's look at those summertime temperatures that are above normal in those areas. Monday afternoon, this is tomorrow, into the 80s across the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley, and then some 80s poking out there into Ontario, Canada. Notice the trough out west, though, into California, Nevada. We're going to be much cooler than normal than we've been all summer long as we go into Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, and even into the Wednesday time frame. We're going to be seeing cooler air out there. You can see more 80s with that ridge for to the east and then we really start to warm up and those 90s become more pronounced by Friday late in the week from Kansas southward into Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana and those heat index values could be push pushing into the triple digits. So Tulsa, Oklahoma City there into Wichita Falls, Texarkana, Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way down to Waco. We could be around 100, 105 degrees with our heat index by Friday afternoon late in the week. Now this trough is going to come with some fanfare. We're actually going to be seeing some rainfall here across portions of the southern Canadian prairies, so from Manitoba down into Saskatchewan, especially southern Saskatchewan, southern Alberta, and then more so here into western and central Montana. And that's an area, again, that needs the moisture. So we're going to watch this low pressure develop out here to the west on Monday, and then that's going to get a little bit stronger, 998 millibar low. Remember, the lower the number and the pressure the lower the pressure is and the stronger the system will be. So we're going to have a stronger low pressure system there on the Wyoming and Montana state line as we go into Tuesday. Nice moisture there behind that into Montana. Very dry areas but we also have to watch the uh, the signal for severe weather. We have a marginal risk. This is a level 1 out of 5 on the risk scale from northwest Minnesota into eastern North Dakota and then an unusual area for severe weather but over here into northeastern Nevada, Utah and down into portions of the Four Corners region We'll have to keep an eye on that for Monday. And then from the southern Canadian prairies all the way down here into New Mexico, the Western Plains and the Front Range in Colorado and Eastern Colorado. We're going to have to watch out for that marginal risk level one out of five for severe weather as we go into Tuesday. Wednesday comes along even stronger low. It's occluding up here in Southern Saskatchewan. Very nice moisture feed into Saskatchewan, Southern Alberta, and even Western Central portions of Montana. And then as we go into Thursday, a lot of that moisture kind of dries up as it moves into Southern Canada. And then finally by Friday, most of the country looks to remain dry as we end the work week. So here are the rainfall totals during that five-day period between Monday tomorrow on September 16th through Friday late in the week on September 20th. Heaviest of the rains from Manitoba down into southern Saskatchewan, southern Alberta, and western and central Montana. Those areas could be adding up the moisture one, two, three inches worth, and then some possible moisture here across the upper Midwest northern and central plains as we go through the week as well so thank you all for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel for the latest weather information right at your fingertips whether it's a video or a live stream make sure all post notifications are turned on for any videos live streams that i do here in the future we are getting very close to 100,000 subscribers so make sure to subscribe and help out 
Make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It also helps out in a big way. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll always get to those after the video. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their weekend out there.